Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, and howdy if you're new. So today we're going to be doing a little mod on the ROG Ally. We're going to mod the joysticks, and we're going to stiffen them up a little bit. In my opinion, the sticks were a little on the looser side, and that's not a problem, but it's just a personal preference where I like my sticks to feel a little bit more firm. So the way that you do this is you have to fully disassemble the joystick and remove the spring. Stretch the spring and successfully put it all back together and pray it works. It's pretty difficult, but if you like to tinker and you like to take things apart, this might be right up your alley. However, if you've never done something like this before, please watch and just know that on a scale of 1 to 10, it's probably an 8 and it's not a newbie friendly mod at all. So without further ado, let's hop right on in. So here's the things that you're going to need to get started with. You probably can get by with what you already have, but these are the things that I used and I would recommend to make the project easier. So you're firstly going to need a small screwdriver set that will run you about $10 to $20 on Amazon, Walmart, or Micro Center. A pair of long nose tweezers or a set that will run you about $10 on Amazon or Walmart. And most importantly, you're going to need a cheap dial caliper or micrometer, and those will run you about $7 to $10 on Amazon or Harbor Freight. And then optional, it's going to be like a magnifying glass and a bright light, and that's going to help you be able to see what you're working on. Yeah, probably about five to ten bucks there. And then the last optional is going to be something like a project mat from either Gamers Nexus or something like that. That way you have a spot to put all your screws and keep everything organized and just make it much easier to know where things go. All right, so first of all, you take the back plate out, you start removing your screws for the joystick area, just like so. Take your fingernails on the white side of this connector on each side, wiggle, wiggle. Don't use tweezers, you don't want to scratch out the PCB. Flip those little levers, pull these little flat ribbon cables back towards you, wiggle. That one as well. I might need tweezers on this one, we'll see. Yep, we're going to need the tweezers on that one. Just be very careful with your tweezers. Pulls out pretty gently, you don't need to yank. Just make sure your little flipper is up. Now, make sure you remove all the screws, pull this out gently. Then you're going to pull the joystick cap off. Now you're going to notice that three tabs are broken because I have taken this thing apart and put it back together a couple times. When you're prying or putting them back together, sometimes these tabs will break. No worries. You just want to make sure to keep it all together and you'll see in a minute. So you move these two screws right here. There's a ribbon cable connected. You just want to make sure that little flipper lever is up. Make sure you get all your screws out all the way first. Flip that little lever up to the left and wiggle. And if you've taken this apart before, you just don't want to lose all your stuff on the bottom side. So you can see those tabs where I've tried to bend them back and they snapped. But here, I'm going to show you a fresh one. And this fresh one right here is what I'm talking about. These little tabs right here can break. But like I said, no worries. If you're crafty, you can put it back together without these tabs. There is two other tabs that won't break on the sides right here. Those are enough to hold it in as long as you just bend them inwards. That way they have enough tension. So get a flathead screwdriver, bend them towards your thumb while pressing in with your thumb. It's hard to really make sense of it. But once those are all bent, you'll take that middle tab and bend it out on each side just a little bit and try to hold the back side so it doesn't snap out because the spring is under pressure and it could fly out. But if you're careful, you shouldn't lose any parts. I'm going to lay it down in the same orientation that it came out. This is the little plunger. And this is the little PCB board. Everything does matter with the orientation. So now you can see inside of here, there's tiny little things you don't want to lose. But uh, here we go. Take the little plunger out. The spring may or may not be attached. And set everything back down exactly as you see it take pictures all that good stuff because those tiny little pieces inside as you'll see in a minute can come out stretch your spring to about 5.5 factory would be about 4.7 or 4.6 keep stretching until you get to the desired length just do a little bit at a time only takes a little bit put it back in there make sure all the other parts are in the exact same spot Take your plunger, put it back in. You have to be very careful if you lay this down on its side without the back plate on. These little pieces like that that I'm holding, those things will fall out everywhere. I had this whole thing fall apart on me so many times. I wish I had recorded it, but this is where the tweezers will come in handy trying to put it back together if it does. Voila. 
Now get your little back plate, bend those little tabs inward with your fingers. Put the PCB back on the right orientation. Put the little back plate back on. And it's the same order for both joysticks. So I'm going to skip some of the steps later on to save some time, but just reference this for the both joysticks. Putting it back together is the same, just a reverse order. Put that in there, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it seats in Then flip your little lever, line your screw holes up, screw it back together. Now make sure you move all the cables back out of the way, gently position it back in. It's a little fiddly, but it'll go back in. Now you want to make sure you line those ribbon cables just right in the little slit. You can use tweezers on this one, it's pretty safe. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Once it's in there, you flip your lever. Same with the big one right here. Wiggle and flip the lever. Put all the screws back in. Make sure all your screws are in. You put that little connector back in. Now on the other side, pull this tape layer back. It's protecting the ribbon cable flipper. I'm guessing because it's under tension, they don't want it automatically like accidentally flip up or something. So flip that lever right there, pull it out with some tweezers. These are terrible tweezers for the job. That's why I had a set because some tweezers will work, some tweezers don't. And there you go. Wiggle, wiggle, just gently. Flip that lever right there. Wiggle that cable out. That one's got a curve to it, so it's sort of tricky, but not really. And now move that out of the way a little bit. Got that one. You flip the lever. Some of these levers can be a little tricky, so you just want to make sure they're flipped all the way. And use your fingernails to wiggle that out. Do not use tweezers here. You will scratch the PCB up if you do and slip. Definitely don't want to slip with a screwdriver or any tweezers, but hey, if you mess up a part, there are places that sell these replacement parts online for fairly cheap now. Remove all your screws. Now the spring from the factory, like I said, it's about a 4.7 to 4.6. You'll want to stretch that out to about a 5.4 to 5.5. The longer it is, the tighter it's going to be. I think I set mine at about 5.4-ish. We'll see. Just keep measuring until you get to the desired measurement. You want to measure it uncompressed, so you want to move those calipers just until it's kissing it. Don't put any tension on it. You'll put everything back in the reverse order. Put the plunger back on. And I'm even going to experiment later on the next video with some keyboard lube and see if that helps the feel of it any. Make sure your PCB is referenced in the right way. Take the little metal back plate, put it back on, make sure to bend your little tabs. That way it will snap back into place and it won't automatically fly off and fling off when you turn it upside down. There you go, locked in place, it's good to go. Put it back together the same way you did the first one, put the cap back on. When you're putting it back in the device, make sure there's no ribbon cables underneath it getting trapped. That way you don't have to do this twice. Go in and put everything back together in the reverse order, same as the first one. Make sure your tabs are flipped up before you start putting these cables in. Make sure it's lined up perfectly, because if it's at an angle, it might not go in. I'm gonna put that one in, that one's pretty easy. Bada bing, bada boom, flip it back. And as you've moved this around and held it, those little flippers will flip back on themselves sometimes so just make sure you know that uh, they are flipped up before you start putting it in. Put that connector back in, put all your screws back in. Let 
All right, put the back plate back on and you can see our NVMe heatsink mod. Go check out the video on it. Definitely worth it. Now turn it back on, go to the gamepad tester website and you can test out your joysticks. Make sure they work. Mine work phenomenally well. It feels about 20% better on the stiffness. I think it's going to be um, pretty good long term. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with it. However, only time will tell. But so far, so good. Feels pretty good playing Modern Warfare. As far as dead zones, I don't notice any dead zone problems with mine. And the joysticks right here, as you can see, they go all the way around. But the one thing is the circularity test. It seems about average of what it normally is. About 10 to 20%, I believe, is the uh, kind of accepted range with these. But other than that, man, this is an awesome mod. I definitely feel like it improved the joysticks. They feel a lot stiffer. They feel a lot more accurate when I'm playing Modern Warfare. I know it didn't improve my accuracy, but it allows me to kind of like slow down and think about where everything's going. If you're like me and you have a Xbox Series or Xbox Elite Series 2 controller where you can adjust the sticks, I keep mine on the tightest setting and it just feels good to me. So if that feels good to you, I would say this is worth it. It's very tricky. It's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of margin for error here and there's a lot of places you can mess up. So just be extremely careful. If you have any questions, drop by the Discord. But other than that, I hope all y'all have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.